The cabin and the bed are two separate parts and are held together with magnets with a diameter of 15 mm and a height of 3 mm. The magnets are pressed into these parts from the bottom. With these cables, I power the lights on the bed and the cabin. The Alpine Flex Tiller is lifted with a string so it can be lifted without a problem and when it gets lowered, it automatically follows the terrain. At the back, I placed a 70 kg standard size servo to lift the Alpine Flex Tiller. A 35 kg 360 degree servo or a 18 kg 720 degree servo will also work if the spool diameter gets reduced. In the centre are the two main drive brushless motors. I use the Detrim BM 3700-2600kV. The back sprocket is driven with a three-stage belt system using GT2 belts. The all-way blade is moved by a 35kg servo with a link system. Here, you can again see the magnet holders. In the front, there is the servo mount for the all-way blades, and in the back is the servo mount for the lift servo for the Alpin Flex Tiller. These aluminium parts are connected to the link from the servo. The pulley system consists of six pulleys in a three-stage reduction configuration. On the motor is a 16-teeth GT2 pulley with a bore of 5mm. The second pulley is a 60-teeth pulley with a bore of 5mm. The third pulley has 20 teeth with a bore of 5mm. The fourth pulley has 60 teeth with a bore of 8mm. The fifth pulley has 20 teeth with a bore of 8mm. And the last pulley connected to the drive sprocket has 40 teeth with a bore of 8mm. All the wheels in the drive sprocket are two pieces, an inner rim printed out of a hard plastic like PLA or PETG, and a soft outside part printed out of TPU. This is done to prevent the snow from sticking to the wheels. The softer the TPU is, the better it works. I used a 70 Shaw Hardness TPU. The rear axle is driven by a 40 teeth GT2 pulley which is transferring the power with a 8mm precision shaft to the drive sprocket which is fixed in place with two M4 grub screws. The two printed bearing holders are screwed together through the 4mm aluminium plate and the 6082 RS bearings are pressed into the parts. Don't forget to use a printed spacer so the sprocket doesn't rub on the bearing holder. Here are the same bearings and the same 8mm shaft used. The small pulley has 20 teeth and the big one has 60 teeth. The 20 and 40 teeth pulley are connected with a 150mm long, 6mm wide belt. The other two belts are both 200mm long with the same 6mm width. For the first pulley pair, I used a 5mm precision shaft together with 605ZZ bearings. This aluminium piece is connected via a push rod with the servo. The mounting points of the all-way blade are printed separate of the main front body so they can be printed flat to ensure maximum strength. Here you can see how the servo moves the all-way blade. To drive the brushless motor, I used the Hobbywing 60 Amp 4 in 1 ESC. I highly recommend to use a BL Heli 32 ESC or similar because they have the capability to keep a steady RPM. When the load gets higher, they automatically increase the current so the RPM does not change. With such a ESC is no sensor needed, but most of the time there is some optimization of the parameters needed and most of those ESCs have a really weak BEC so there is a good BEC needed. The 70 kilogram servo I used has a separate 12 volt power cable because it needs so much power. I directly connected the cable to the main 3S LiPo battery. I used a small 3S capable brushed motor ESC to power the Alpine Flex tiller motors. I programmed my radio so that the motors turn when I lower the Alpine Flex tiller. 
To easily remove the Alpine Flex Tiller, I used BT2 connectors to be able to unplug the motors. The motors are on both sides inside the drum. The wires are routed inside the Alpine Flex Tiller. When I designed the main aluminium plate, I did not realize that the screws meant to adjust the belt tension were hitting the tracks, so I had to countersink them and design a other way to adjust them. I designed an aluminium part with a thread to place in the 3D print to still be able to adjust the tension. The print has to be paused and the part has to be placed in the print before the slit gets closed. The tracks are completely 3D printed. The silver parts are printed out of PETG, although all hard plastics will work. And the black belts are printed out of TPU. I recommend using the A80A95 Shaw Hardness TPU. The belts are made of multiple strips which have a taper where they can be glued together. Make sure to use a flexible glue. The innermost belt uses M3X5 countersink screws and the other ones use M3X5 dome head screws. The countersink screws prevent the screws rubbing on the aluminium plates. The chain consists of 78 ribs connected with 5 belts. I tried to put as much information in this video as possible, but I for sure did not cover everything. So if you have questions, just write a comment. And let me know if you would be interested if I would create a Discord server so we could help each other. I just wanted to say thank you to all the positive comments I received. And now, happy building.